welcome. You're with us here on The Date. Today we're meeting Mittu Chundilia, CEO of Air Asia India. The question everyone is asking is, does Mitty know what he's getting into? He's entering an industry which is fraught with challenges and he has a tough task set out for him. Will he manage to achieve success where plenty others have failed? Mittu is confident that Air Asia will change the dynamics of the Indian travel industry over the next three years. There has been much curiosity about Mittu Chandilya, the new, suave, good-looking, young CEO of AirAsia India. Brought in by Tony Fernandez to build India's biggest airline. Originally from India, Mittu has lived and worked pretty much all over the world, including with Ingersoll Rand in the States and East Asia, and later with Egon Zender in Singapore. He has a charming wife, who is Estonian, and is father to three sons, which he says is the most important role he plays. As I try to get to know him better, I ask Mithu first about his college days, when he also used to model part-time. I ask him whether or not he was a serious student or a backbencher. Honestly, I was a restless student. I wasn't, uh, I was good in school, but I wasn't one of those book smart yeah. types, you know. I wasn't the one who will sit to end hours reading and stuff like that. I would probably, if I had an exam, I'd probably be 11th hour student that will come and read. And I, I was, you know, God, God willing and, you know, thank God that I was actually good in school, mm. you know. And, uh, but I was, I was somebody who really needed to enjoy life. I, I needed to milk yeah. every experience right. and uh, so I did a lot of things out of choosing and a lot of things out of necessity but um, I'd say I was a, I was a good kid mm. and, a, and a decent <laughs> student. I was, I was very good in school but I wasn't, I wasn't one of those meticulous, you know, right. who read everything from end to end. I was more, I think I was more uh, conceptual as opposed to being more book smart. And that continued into college as well, and, and it was soon after college, uh, right, that you actually started your own company. That's right. Actually, it was uh, right towards the end of my college period okay. where I started my own company, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was just, uh, it, it wasn't something that I'd planned to do. Right. I'd always had this entrepreneurial side in me. Right. That's the part that comes from my dad. Right. And this opportunity just came up, and it was something that came out of nowhere. I used to go to a a McDonald's and a KFC mm. and um, you know when you go to those fountain machines yeah. and you kept pressing the, the the Pepsi or the Coke or whatever that is that you wanted and you got that fizz. Right. I, I used to get the fizz all the time <laughs> at the same franchise. So I actually complained to the franchise mm. manager and I said look you're gonna lose customers I'm, I'm gonna go you know right next door to the Wendy's right. or whatever and he said look I just can't do anything about it. It takes a lot of time for me to pull out a bag and then to go check the system and all of that. So that actually clicked in my head to say, look, if I came up with a mm. product for you, mm. would that would you be interested in buying it from me? And uh, this is a this is a thing yeah. as a college kid, you know, you you know, you're looking to you're just, eager and you're, you're eager. excited. And, exactly, yeah. you're eager and you want to do something. One of the large bottlers came and bought it off of us. Nice, that's so, awesome. As college kids, it was a great way to pay off your loans. Of yeah. course. Yeah. And what was the what was the biggest takeaway from that? Was it just the the high of actually having had a successful uh, company at such an early age, or was there also uh, more that you took away in terms of learnings and running a business? I I think a lot more of the latter. You right. know, the high is you know yeah. once you get through the initial deal and yeah. the money comes in the bank and the money goes out. Yeah. <laughs> there's you know the high goes away real quick, but. I think what was a lot more satisfactory for mm. me was the fact that you created something from scratch. Right. And you know, for many people, they go yeah. through life trying to build something and it always fails. Mm. And we had this, this lucky thing that actually hit some sort of success right. from day one. So that was very satisfactory. As you said, you've always had this entrepreneurial yeah. spirit. You've always had this slight restlessness in you. Um, what is it? What is the larger picture? What is it that drives you really? Is it, or really just gets you going? I mean, mm. you, you moved on to a corporate career as well. In that, was it, uh, was it the thrill of uh, 
being part of a big organization like an Ingersoll, traveling all over the world, is it today, for instance, managing change at a company like AirAsia, which is starting something new? Mm. Um, or is it everything? I mean, what is it that actually gets you going? I, I think it's a combination of all of those things. Um, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have had experiences, I think, which tie really well into my current role right now. I loved my startup days and I loved my Ingersoll Rand days. I think any of those experience in its singularity would not have been a definitive right. experience for me. I think they were each building off of each other. Because I was in a startup, yeah. you know, it allowed me to kind of question rules. It allowed me to kind of tear plans apart and say, look, let's start from brown up. And I think we can do it with less money. How do you make that dollar go a lot longer? Right. In a larger company, because I was always the youngest, I was the youngest GM, and I walked into fairly turbulent situations. You know, we had moved into Midwestern US, mm -hmm. and you were in charge of running a, a large plant. And the first call I made after looking at the numbers and talking to people in the plant was that this plant was not sustainable. Just in terms of cost, it was bleeding. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make the margins I needed to. My distribution didn't make sense to a larger yeah. part of the US. So I made the call to move it to Mexico. And it, it was tough for a 23-year-old 20, to say that. I was just going to say, you were very young at that yes. point. I mean, A, having people actually respect your decision or taking that call. Yes. And B, even for you, was it daunting to, to be in there making those decisions? I think for me, it wasn't that daunting. You know, I think this is... It wasn't confusing, like you knew what to do, which is what's yeah. surprising. <laughs> Initially, when you walk into that room and you're addressing people, yeah. nobody's going to take you seriously. In fact, especially when I went into, I'm not an engineer, right. you know, and I walked into a situation where I'm telling them about process improvements, Lean Six Sigma, right. and, um, you know, they're like, who's this kid and what does he know about us? You know, he's just got a fancy title and he's right. got But I think you got to work... Where has he come from? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm not American, yeah. and, you know. And, but you got to work doubly hard right. to win credibility, and you got to know your stuff inside out. And after a point, people don't, don't, you know, they don't dispute that. They respect you. They may not like you, but they will respect you. And I can deal with that. It's interesting because you went through this as an Indian overseas, and yes. now you're going through it as what's perceived to be an outsider <laughs> yes. back here. Yes. But we'll get to that in a moment. You can't win. <laughs> you <ever>. can't win. <laughs> Look, I love taking risks. I, I, there's, there's, I, I genuinely love taking risks. I like going to places people would never go to. I'd like thinking about strategies that people never thought about. Because what's, where's the fun of going to where everyone else is playing and what everyone else is doing? Right. So you know, honestly, uh, but what it, it actually has shown me about myself is I'm really good in two situations. Okay. Startups right. and turnarounds. Okay. And I'm genuinely, I think those are the best. If you put me in a mature state business, which you want me to incrementally just manage mm -hmm. the top line, I'm probably not the best person. I can do it, right. but I wouldn't enjoy it. I love the challenges, I love obstacles, I love hurdles, right. I love those, you know, I'm, I'm a restless guy. <laughs> I need challenges, otherwise I'm not motivated. So you're obviously in the right place and we're going to talk a little about those challenges. But first tell me, you know, Tony Fernandez is a very out there CEO, he's synonymous with the brand, etc. Face of the brand as such. Is that the kind of CEO you would also like to be or build up to be in terms of, um, you know, in terms of being the, the name or the brand that's associated with AirAsia as well? Or are you a more behind the scenes kind of person? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not more of a behind the scenes guy because <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Uh, He's open uh, about it. Yeah, I'm absolutely open about it. And, and Tony knows this. And, and I, I think, think it's part of the culture as well, is. of the group, right? It is. Yeah. Our, our belief is that the CEO is the brand, mm. you know, and the CEO is somebody that... Look, ultimately, I believe in that because the CEO, the buck stops with him or her. Right. So they need to own that. And, and why do you have to be secretive about that? So, um, you know, I, I don't own a Formula One team or anything like that. But no, but I'm fairly, you know, I don't hold back punches. Right. You know, and I speak my mind. And uh, look, I'm a young guy, right? What's the use of, you know, being really demure about certain things? Right. Um, but um, look, I think we'll do things a bit differently in India. Yeah. and. Um, Part of it is our culture is different. Mm -hmm. You know, humility is a big part of myself. You know, it's okay. what I grew up with. Um, but that's, you know, there's a confidence that we all have. And we're raring to go. And we're really proud about this mm -hmm. brand. 
So I think you'll see us a lot out there. The CEO will be speaking quite a bit. We'll be doing quirky things, which may not be normal in the aviation space. Okay. But um, our belief is now they are the brand. Do you think that Indians will relate to you or will have any trouble relating to you as the face of the brand? Um, you know, because you know, they might uh, come across uh, a gentleman who they feel has a slight accent mm -hmm. or you know, maybe doesn't understand uh, his problems uh, because he's not from here or hasn't been here in a while. Is that something you feel you would have to grapple with or do you think that's easy to overcome? Well, you know, the terms Indians, is, it's a very broad term. So I, I, I probably wouldn't be everyone's cup of tea, yeah. honestly. I, but I think the majority of them will relate to me. Mm. I speak a little bit of Hindi, Todi <laughs> Siati. You know, I speak Tamil, you know, Kunjo um, Kunjo No, but I, I think, uh, see, the reality is I am coming back to India, but India has been a big part of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, in many ways, culturally, I am still very Indian. So that should come across in any discussions I'm having, any kind of, you know, meetings I'm having with people, whether they're senior ministers or whether, the, you know, there are people that I'm meeting on the roadside. Right. People should be able to relate to a big part of me. So I think a big part of why I am, mm -hmm. I am here and why it made sense for me and why it made sense for Air Asia and all our stakeholders mm -hmm. is the fact that I am Indian. I still hold my Indian passport right. with pride. <laughs> and um, I think it's a, it's a big part of, you know, why me coming back here makes a lot of sense. Well, on that note, let's take a very quick break. When we come back, we get chatting to Mitu about some of those different things that he's planning to do here in India with Air Asia. We'll be back in a minute. India was always in our plans. India was always something we thought about in terms of coming back to. It's a big part of why, you know, and there's, there's this, this is nationalistic side. You know, when you go to the U.S. and you're doing things, when I lived in China, India was always being talked about. And I took a lot of pride in that.